so apparently the state of Israel has now gone one step further in its totalitarian efforts. Now before I get into this let me just really quick explain that I have spoken about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in the past and I've spoken about how the Netanyahu government and essentially the Zionist government itself, the Jewish nationalist, fascist, militant, imperialist, you know, quasi-imperialist sort of group has essentially been denying the rights and freedoms and just essentially butchering the human rights of the Palestinian people for, you know, pretty much decades now, but have also systematically also been purging people themselves, actually been attacking Israeli citizens, Jewish Israeli citizens, who speak out against the regime. And this could be no more apparent than in the case of Ezra Nawi. Jew according to the Jewish Voices for Peace, Jewish Israeli activist Ezra Nawi has now spent more than a week detained by the Israeli authorities for no apparent reason. A gag order was put on his cause so, there, so that the allies in Israel could not raise the, any alarm about his arrest. He was detained without access to a lawyer for four days, and a gag or, this gag order that was put upon him and against uh, Israeli allies essentially means that they can't speak out, and so they've turned to the Jewish Voices for, help, uh, for Peace for help to get the word out and to essentially get Ezra Nawi out of jail. His detention was recently extended for the second time until Wednesday, and he may face serious charges after that. Democratic rights for Jewish Israelis who speak up against Israelis, uh, Israel's human rights abuses are deteriorating, and their allies face a backlash every day, not just in, in Israel, but in the U.S. as well and around the world. It still does not come close to the persecution that the Palestinian activists face inside Israel in the West Bank, Gaza, or East Jerusalem, but it is a clear reminder that Israel's standards of democracy grow weaker by the day. Um, an actual quote by the Jewish Voices for Peace actually wrote this. Having denied Palestinians under occupation their rights to any form of political protest, the Israeli government is now in the process of doing the same thing to Israeli citizens who support the Palestinian cause. Last week, the Israeli police arrested Ezra Nawi, our friend and prominent dissident, who has been indispensable in the struggle for the survival of the Palestinian communities in the South Hebron Hills. This arrest is not an isolated incident, but the latest in an orchestrated campaign against dissenting voices supporting Palestinian rights. In recent months, the Israeli government has taken new steps to demonize, deny funding access, and now literally threaten with imprisonment those of us who oppose its criminal policies. And while these violations of Nawi's rights are no more severe than the routine violation of the rights of Palestinians in countless ways, they do, however, signal a new stage in Israel's practice of violently crushing dissent and resistance. Also, there has recently been uh, news that a second Israeli activist has, was also to de detained, and there's another gag order in place to try and stop anybody from raising, away, uh, from raising that alarm as well. Now, according to the Times of Israel, there's conflicting reports that says that he um, on the issue on how he was arrested. Some claim that he was arrested for uh, reportedly uh, he was basically um, how he was arrested basically for trying to uh, sell uh, Palestinian uh, Palestinian lands lands to Jews, which they claim is uh, under Palestinian authority law is punishable by death. But the crime of basically what he's being what he's done here was trying to flee the country of Israel. So none of this actually really makes any sense. And the crime of which he's basically being accused of is not really clear in Israel. Although I'm assuming it's more of this whole idea that, you know, he probably did something, he obviously has done something that has actually pissed off Netanyahu's government, that has essentially 
may have been in support of Palestine. Now, keep in mind, again, they try to make this claim that, oh, he's selling, Pal that, you know, he's wanted by Palestine, but then then the Jewish people, turn the, the Jewish uh, nationalist regime turns it against him and is now trying to arrest him and saying he was fleeing the country, but they don't necessarily say why. Other reports, like his lawyer, state that he was not trying to leave the country. He was not trying to flee the country. Now, essentially, Ezra Nawi, he's a Jewish uh, activist. He's a uh, Gandhian reformist. He's a, li he's a liberal activist. He's also openly homosexual. Now, if we know anything about the, the, the fascist state of Israel, is that they, they're not very keen on homosexuality. I mean, we bitch about the idea about Putin in Russia and his anti-homosexual agenda, but the Netanyahu government is actually very much worse. Um, Ezra Nawi is also an activist with the uh, Ta'u Yash group. I know I probably butchered that. Uh, a reportedly sus um, suspected of conspiracy to commit a crime. Um, he, he, that, he's reportedly suspected of conspiracy to commit a crime. And now he's a prominent campaigner for Palestinian rights. So keep that in mind when they basically say that he's wanted by Palestine um, uh, because he helps Palestinian. Uh, um, it, you know, they they claim that he's helped, that he's. Um, the, anyway, the, the the reports are really conflicted. And essentially, Channel 2 reported Monday that uh, during the afternoon, police were watching the suspect fall, uh, follow him to the airport. Although at first, as at first, officers assumed he was going to meet incoming travelers, it soon became clear he was trying to leave the country. Yada 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 blah. Um, police arrested Nat Nawi and took him away for questioning. Now again, this is a man that is a prominent supporter of basically bilateral relations. He's in support of basically creating a two-nation state. He wants Palestinians and Israelis to basically basically come together in peace and run their country in a peaceful way and not in apartheid and not in a way that is apartheid like that is not, you know, separate but equal, that is not segregated in any way. This is a man that's literally fighting for the rights of not only his countrymen, but of Palestinians who cannot have a say because the Israeli government will not let them. So essentially what this man has done is, in my personal opinion, this is, I'm, this is nothing more than my opinion. At the way I see it, the only crime that Nawi is accused of is essentially fighting against the status quo of the Israeli government. Fighting back against the fascism that exists within that country. That is his only crime. This is a man who wants reform. A man that basically wants a change in his government. Now, let me just put it this way. The only way that you're going to achieve true change and revolution, you know, frankly, is through the armed revolt of the people. But the Israeli people aren't going to revolt. They don't have the drive for revolution. Sure, you may achieve reforms and stuff like that, but the only way to actually achieve the peaceful solution, if you will, to creating a, to creating a, um, to, to creating a Palestinian Israeli, a united Palestinian Israeli nation, is through a revolution. You have to oust the fascists that are in power. As it stands right now, is Netanyahu and his government is too powerful, they are dictatorial, and they're too totalitarian, and they're only going to get more totalitarian. The fact that, that Jewish activists 
that are fighting, that Israeli activists that are fighting for Palestinian rights or who are fighting for this one state solution, that are fighting for peace agreements, that are fighting for the human rights of, of both sides of the spec, of both peoples. The fact that these people even speak out against the regime and are literally being taken away in black, you know, in, in black coverings and stuff like that, literally being snatched from the streets, never to be heard from again, even possibly killed. And then Israel wants to blame uh, Palestine for killing people, supposedly because of they, you know, they sell land. Uh, Palestinian land to Jewish people and what is Israel doing? What is the Israeli government doing? They are killing people mercilessly detaining people on no good no good reasons no, without even the sense of due process Israel is in violation of so many fucking universal rights that it's absolutely amazing. So, I thought I would bring this up. I thought I would at least go off the cuff for this one video, so don't expect too many of these. Because due to the 15 minute limit that I have, you won't be expecting too many out of these from me. But I wanted to bring this up. As a person that obviously has far leaning views than uh, Mr. Nowy. I obviously don't agree with the tactics he uses because I believe that they are too liberal. What I find interesting is the fact that groups like the Times of Israel and other, you know, you know other centrist conservative, you know, pro government leaning sort of news articles would call him far left when Mr. Nowy is nothing of the sort. He's a center leftist, if not a, just a, a blatant liberal. He is a blatant reformist. And that's really all he is. He's a social democrat at best. But he's not far left. And the views that he has are not radical, unless, of course, you really actually are that you know, ignorant and really are of that just if you really are that, that cynical, if you really are that uh, indoctrinated to the state, to the statish you know line but this man is not a radical he's not a far left he's not a far leftist he's a social democrat at best but his ideas, his, the idea of wanting a you know, a joint Israeli-Palestinian state in unity and, you know, in strength and in, frankly, in, in harmony so, or somewhat of harmony and basically a peaceful solution living together yes, I can see how that is radical because that challenges the status quo of the, of the Israeli fascist indoctrination so in this case, I will actually go out on a limb and actually say that Mr. Nowy should be freed, that Mr. Nowy did not commit any crime, and that the Israeli government would be, you know, would be mindful to set him free and let the Israeli people speak, and to let the voices of the Jewish Israeli population and the Palestinian population and the Arab Israeli population speak freely. And if that happens to mean that the Israeli people and the Palestinian people want the fascist regime to step down, then it would be in the best interests of the politicians and the Israeli government to do such. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. Peace. Peace.